Uh, welcome everybody to episode 57 of China Talk. This is the regionals episode. The regionals are coming. The regionals are coming. It's the worst, it's the worst reference I've ever made in my life. Okay, so Edward Gaming, Invictus Gaming, Chaogu Reapers. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of sad they didn't re name themselves the Reapers to make it that much more awkward for the EDG matchup. Uh, and Snake Esports. So, four teams, two slots. And of course, it's double bracket and all. So, we, like for this episode, we are defending. We've randomly drawn, like, team names. And we are essentially going to be defending these teams. And their run through the regionals and their chances. Essentially, we're going to have debate topics. This is going to be, this is going to be a thing. So, uh... Let's go person by person to see what we drew, drew out. Uh, let's go Michael. Drexen, what'd you draw? Snake. <laughs> Snake. <laughs> Snake. Uh, All right. He's no. not dead yet, okay? <laughs> In case people have been not watching LPL, but watched this show for some reason for the last, <laughs> like, 10 weeks <laughs> or 12 weeks or whatever. Uh, Snake is a team that is still kind of new to LPL in the sense that they joined last spring and uh, everybody everybody that tuned into LSPL kind of thought it was between them and King to like rise up and be super good and the King thing didn't happen that's for damn sure um, so even though they were really good in the offseason when Snake came into the LPL they actually um, <clears throat> they got away with uh, like playing really well but they were really really one dimensional in their play but nobody really knew how to handle their one dimensional play so what they did really well when they actually were able to do it was incredibly strong. And they were doing really well in the regular season until the playoffs came and people were a little bit more prepared and they were ill-prepared for uh, like a best of five against LPL teams. And uh, oddly enough, they went against King, who they did uh, defeat, but it was a very, very close set when in the regular season the disparity between the two King or the two Kings, the two teams was... Uh, yeah, was was pretty huge at the time, or at least it looked like. And then after that, you kind of learned, uh, Snake kind of learned that by getting crushed by LGD, I think, directly after the spring playoffs, when they met in the semifinals, uh, it wasn't even close. It was just like a, I mean, the games are like somewhat close, like, uh, even though there was like a 3-0 scoreline, but overall they, they did lose every single game and LGD made it like pretty convincing by the end. So they learned that if they're going to be playing these top teams that they're not going to be able to get away with what they were doing in the regular season. So um, <laughs> going to use that lovely word experimentation. <laughs> so what Snake did Don't is say the e word. in the summer, in the summer Stop split, the e -word, they used... Please. <laughs> no, stop. No. Stop. <laughs> in the summer. No, like, no one like, ever uh, experiments ever, Mike, okay? <laughs> Everyone is 100% serious all the time, every single game. Okay, let's keep going. All right. So anyway, this is this actually happened. They did experiment. Was it a good idea or, or not? I don't know. I don't I, care. How do you know I, they I, experiment? I, I, do you listen to yourself, Dre Drexen? Are bad? you listening to yourself? Um, They're just bad teams. <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway yeah so lots of good things happen no but seriously state. how do you know they experimented okay so because so if we're gonna do thing. this we might as well like yeah yeah no no no. Uh, serious, no on a serious note snake snake did try to divert their style and it looked really really bad for a while actually they tried to implement split pushing and like different like covert missions with objectives and stuff like that and it was it was just not going for them but in a way it was good because it expanded their repertoire and even though they weren't good at those styles and they still kind of revolve around finding a strong team fight or a 5v5 five, five specifically not so much skirmishes it gave them more experience playing against those kind of things i feel and i think that after they decided to do these kind of strategies that they were stronger against teams that were diversifying their own strategies as well uh on top of that they kind of put the hot seat under a lot of their members by bringing in uh substitutes and stuff like that like uh martin or martin for uh crystal who ended up doing really well in his showing i believe and at the time of the meta was actually really nice because even though crystal had been starting to uh, diversify his role a little bit because he played a lot of silver i think it was his most played champion and he actually did pretty well on that like martin kind of gave that flexibility as a safe player rather than a player that needs to uh carry the game and all uh and probably the biggest one is their new mid laner u which is actually really cool because you can kind of like in a stretch kind of make this 
okay, never mind. It's a shitty. Uh, that's a shitty narrative. I was gonna say EDG revenge on their mid lane for Fawn, but no, yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, EDG's old mid laner Yu came in, and he gets. I I feel like he actually gets a lot more freedom on this team than he did on EDG, and I think it pays off really well. And I think that's a huge deal for Snake. So, um, yeah. That's that's kind of where we are come the playoffs. Oh, and also Beast had uh, ZZR contesting for his spot, but I do believe that they are using Beast for the playoffs, so uh, I don't really know yet, but it's probably a good idea that they use Beast just because he's more experienced, and ZZR had mentioned that he like looks up to and respects clear love, which could be a bad sign because if you think you're strictly inferior to your opponents in a playoff match, then they'll probably mess with their head. Um, so good choice by them. Uh, and Ella is obviously already pretty good. And Flandra, Flandra, this is, uh, I don't know why I didn't bring this guy up. So he was forced into like so many Maokai games and and stuff like that that wasn't that he wasn't really familiar with in the spring split. Whereas in LSPL, he's always a, uh, a carry top laner using utilizing like really strange builds and and champions and stuff like that. And to an extent, mm-hmm. they, they kind of found like a really good even ground with this guy. Like they finally got it. Like sometimes he still gets a little bit too ham, but they got they kind of got it right with a balance with this guy. Like now he is a carry top laner, but he's like a little bit more reliable, like, a little bit more meta, like, not so unreasonable with his, well, sometimes not so unreasonable, like, they're, they're, they're still fine-tuning him, he's like a, he's like an instrument, like, he's, he's really nice once you, like, tune it, but it's, like, it sounds all shitty when, when you don't tune it, I don't know that, where that reference is going, but anyway, that's Fondra, and so, they have a lot of reliable threats on Snake, and, um, even though I still kind of think that they are, too reliant on the 5v5 team fight that uh, through exploring all these methods of playing the game, they've, or at least my uh, my hypothesis is through exploring all these uh, methods of playing the game, they found ways not so much to win games using other strategies, but to for- force these 5v5s to happen. Um, so that's kind of where the snake is and how they came up. But weren't right, they just so... bad at those other strategies? Mm-hmm. I mean... yes. Yeah, we actually agree with that. We actually think they weren't as bad at some of these experimental strategies, okay? We're not saying that they're, like, super awesome. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I expelled the salt, so... so I think yeah. I think Snake, like... I think what's really cool about Snake, though, is just that it felt like in spring they had no idea how to use a regular season to prepare for playoffs, and then it was the polar opposite in this season. Like, they understood that they had to use these... Oh wait, never mind. There's no experimentation. Blah, blah, blah. No, but no. They, seriously, they understood that they had a long season, and they knew that they were they were likely to make playoffs. I'm assuming, mm-hmm. just based on prior performances and the fact that even in the beginning they were still pretty well in the standings, so they could afford to do these kind of things and prepare. So now now they use summer to learn a lot, and I really like that. And I don't think it was something like where they came in and they premeditated <laughs> going into the sum- summer. It's like for the first two games we're gonna try it. For the first, like, two weeks, we're going to try poke comps. And then, after we have enough experience trying poke comps, we're going to try, like, try this more split push based strategy. And then we're going to try, like, assassin-based compositions. No, they probably just kind of, kind of went into games and they're like, So, what do you guys feel like playing today? Yeah, we haven't tried that in a while, let's wing it! Like, that's probably what they did, and it's still a better use of their, their regular season time than, like, playing the same thing over and over again. So we're not arguing that they, like, premeditated, super mastermind these, this experimentation. It was just honestly, like, it might as well have been goofing off, but I do think it made them better. So, mm-hmm. All sorry, right, I so had to get, off, get that off my chest, but I feel better now. So, I'll yeah, stop yeah, interrupting right. people. Those are no, that's fine, favorite. that's fine. I expelled I expelled the salt with the with the interesting block didn't do much but still I still felt a little salty afterwards but you know I just rested and all was fine so Kelsey on topic here what team did you uh, get drawn with um, I drew Edward Gaming uh, as you can see I'm wearing their shirt and I also mm-hmm. have um, whoop bosoms so I'm doing Quail of Proud in my own way. <laughs> Uh, Edward Gaming, you probably know about, unless you haven't been paying any attention to International League of Legends at all, like, I don't know, maybe suddenly you grew interested in Worlds, but you had no interest in, M- interest in MSI. So, starting from last year, they obviously had a really terrible Worlds showing, um, if you watched Worlds with their two Chinese players, Yu, who Mike just talked about, and Name. Um, mm-hmm. Name did not have a good showing. There's a debate as to whether he was sick or just bad. I don't know. We're not going to cover that here. A they got about. Deft and Pawn, who said they joined the team because they thought Clear Love was really good and they knew him from solo queue. And so they, as long as you're paying them a lot of money, they might as well join a team with Clear Love, right? So mm-hmm. um, they went into the 
spring season playing kind of the disjointed style, but they were still extremely good at, you know, winning some of their lanes. Like, Koro had gotten significantly better at being self-sufficient and playing lane really, really well. Pawn was really, had really strong lane pressure. Um, their bottom lane was still kind of questionable. They had, like, a support who wasn't that good at the time, and then and they played with Deft. They had a snake game where they got 2 out and immediately, like, they bring in, well, not immediately, but the next week they bring in another support named Mako. And mm -hmm. Clear Love's jungle pressure seems to improve significantly over time. He's ganking bottom lane a lot. They're a very bottom lane-centric team. And ganking, in a recent interview, Mako actually said, our bottom lane isn't even the best in LPL. We just win a lot because Clear Love makes us win. Um, then you have Koro and Pan who play extremely self-sufficient solo lanes. They had a ridiculously good spring season where they went nearly undefeated. They had some stumbling in playoffs where they said they had trouble practicing because Pawn was sick. Um, they went to MSI, they did really well at MSI except for the one game against SKT where apparently they decided to wing a composition that the players wanted to try, okay? Mm. Um, and then they did much better in a much better planned out series against SKT in the finals and won, but it was still very close games, obviously. Um, and then they went into this new season with a very, very puzzling approach where they were playing a different top laner, Amazing J, and a different mid laner, Baimi. And they started to lose a lot of games, it didn't look so good, they were saying that they wanted to give newer players time to play, but they were also saying that both of their solo laners were coincidentally sick at the same time. So, but then the playoffs format changed and suddenly Korra 1 and Pawn were magically healed. And... <laughs> By the power of San Chao. By the power of San Chao, yes. San Chao is our lord and savior. <laughs> um, and they, you know, just started stomping again. They went undefeated 21 games. This is sound familiar, guys. 21 undefeated games, you know, maybe Fanatic storyline. Mm -hmm. um, they went into the playoffs. The Chiefs. Woo! <laughs> they went into playoffs. Clear Love said, if we stumble in playoffs, we'll win worlds. If we just easily win playoffs, we will have trouble at Worlds. Well, they kind of careened into a wall, but, you know, n nevertheless, they did indeed stumble. They lost 0-3 to LGD Gaming. Really strange, bizarre drafts. They lost 1-3 to Invictus Gaming. Really strange, bizarre f drafts. Really high mid lane focus um, from the jungle in those games as well, and uncharacteristic team fighting. Typically, they're like a Baron-centric team fighting type team. Um, that is also extremely early game focused in terms of lane pressure and jungle control. So that is Edward Gaming. And the format is, uh, is it best of three? Best the of three first round is best of three, and then mm -hmm. the subsequent rounds are best of five. So it's going to be two best of threes and three best of fives. Okay. And so, of course, it's double bracket um, going in, so loser's bracket there. And last game is best of five, but of course, if you've already made it to the grand final, you have qualified for Worlds. So, yeah, um, that I works out. I don't think there's actually going to be a grand final. I think it's going to be a... Oh, uh, just qualify. Yeah, you just qualify. The upper okay. bracket winner and the lower bracket winner qualify. Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting. Actually, I didn't know that Pretty interesting. Okay, so should we start up with the matchups, I guess? Executive decision. So, alright, so Michael, how do you think, what edge do you think Snake has over EDG? Um, normally I wouldn't say team fighting because even though I just spent a lot of time praising the team fighting, EDG has been really good at it. But, um, strictly going off of recent data, not so much what I think will happen based on the, both teams at their prime. I'd say that EDG was a little bit lacking in, in communication on who went in in their recent games, or like how to follow up and stuff like that. And I think that's something that Snake could easily capitalize on. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned for EDG's like fo focused uh, target prioritization. And I think Snake's really got that down, but we haven't seen Snake play in a while. So mm -hmm. that's also something to consider. But they've always had really, really strong just straight up 5v5s. And... Another thing is that I feel like you has just gotten better and better this season, whereas I think that Pawn has been in a slump a little bit. So I actually think that that'll be an interesting matchup. Um, and I actually think Flandre will 
probably beat Koro at this rate too. So I think it's actually really interesting to be in a situation where EDG might have to play solo lanes from behind. Um, and kind of rely on, on Deft to be their primary damage source again. Uh, but I mean, um, I could be wrong, but this is, this is how I feel about it. I think that, well, actually I'll just let, I'll just let Kelsey explain how EDG will win, but I do think Snake, Snake will rely, uh, just on making 5v5s happen and forcing them to be so. And also I do, I do think this is the first time where I can say that Snake will probably, like have an edge in the solo lanes, which I think is really interesting. So, all right, Kelsey. So, Snake over the split. Even though they've been trying things and they've been working on things, they had a weakness, and this has been something that's plagued them all year with lane swaps. And I mm -hmm. do think they've gotten a little bit better. They've had games where lane swaps went favorably, but they've also had games where they haven't, and they've just been extremely awkward. Uh, like in the the Royal Never Give Up set, they did swap, but they swapped into almost. Uh, unfavorable matchups in every lane. They had trouble in lane swap situations against LGD when LGD did some of their interesting like three-way swaps and um, so it's just their ability to control lane swap situations has seemed questionable and inconsistent but not as bad as it was. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest lane swap deficits that they actually had was against EDG and EDG wasn't even playing their main lineup so the communication was probably a little bit different. They were playing with Ray top and um, Jin Zhao, AD Carry, and they played a lane swap situation where they abused Draven Snowball against Snake. And Clearlove just dived, dove early, and got the Draven ahead because if you stack up enough CS and enough of the passive, even if you aren't really playing aggressively in lane, and you suddenly get a kill, you're, you can be extremely ahead of your opposing laner. So they did that extremely well and they snowballed very hard in both of those games where they played the Draven and they had their top laner play carry style, um, EDG did, but they had, instead of him trying to 2v1 or play lanes from behind, he actually went mid and ganked you a lot. So that also helped snowball the laners and then Snake just didn't react to that plan at all very well. It was actually pretty humiliating for them. So I think you can be in a situation and EDG is like the most dominant early game team. They average 2,000 gold ahead at 20 minutes, uh, regardless of when they win or lose. And I think in wins, it's like 7,000 gold ahead. Something mm -hmm. stupid and ridiculous, like that stat can't actually be right. Um, so I just think that for them, they won't even have to get to a situation where they have to 5v5 or they have to work on some of that and they'll just snowball really hard. Whereas LGD can be, like in the LGD matchup, even if LGD doesn't have the best jungler, they're pretty proactive in the early game, and they understand like macro play a little bit well. So even though they did fall behind, you could see them kind of making some counter movements. And then in the IG set, obviously they have a really, really strong jungler in Kakao who can counteract some of EDG's early movements, but I just don't see the same thing out of like ZZR and Beast, and Flandra, mm. sometimes his willingness to be extremely proactive backfires on him really hard, so I think mm. that's a place where early to mid game EDG can just close out without having to deal with Snake's late game team fighting. Okay, perfect. Uh, I think we'll just move on to the next one of Chaku versus IG, and then we'll start voting on who we actually think will win in the brackets, and then move forward off of that. Okay. So, Emily, yeah. what team do you represent here? Okay, so I drew um, Chowgu, and for those who That's so aren't... convenient. I know, right? Um, <laughs> since I spent a lot of time talking about them recently. Um, okay, so Chowgu is a team that um, is new to the LPL this split, actually. Um, and they've changed a lot. If you watch them in the LSPL, um, they were pretty much a, like, win lane, win game kind of team. Mm -hmm. Um, they had Swift, who the team followed up on his engages about, like, I would say half of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the rest of the time, they really just relied on their, um, lanes to kind of snowball to win. Um, because they had stronger lanes than the vast majority of the other LSPL teams, so they didn't really need to, like, try anything else like it didn't necessitate any sort of adaptation mm -hmm. um their prior experience in like best of five uh situations came in demacia cup and that's really where you first saw i guess some of their willingness to 
um, like try out some weird stuff that like other teams might not even think about. I know um, a lot of people cite this and I do have to remind everyone that it was a mistake, but that was the first time we saw Doinby going Maokai mid was in Demacia Cup um, because basically their coach Hero told them, oh, you know, Maokai is a counter to Victor and they took it literally instead of like <laughs> uh, what any other team would do, which is to put Maokai top and then obviously use it in team fights. Chaogu was like, no, we're just going to go Maokai mid, and it turned into this crazy, like, jugger tree comp with Lulu, and it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, and I highly suggest you go back and watch that game. But that was kind of the first um, inclination that um, anyone had that Chaogu was going to be any sort of team that tried out new compositions, tried out stuff different, um, and wasn't just going to be this kind of, like, we're going to rely on stomping our lanes. Also, so, they won that game. <laughs> they did. They won that game. Um, to the shock of many, you know? <laughs> to the shock of all, I think. I believe, especially Monte Cristo was kind of salty about that game. But, I mean, it was against WE, so yeah, to be that, clarified. I mean, it's not yeah, like they yeah. upset the it's strongest like team in China team with that composition. Again. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. Um, so, it's not like the second place mid- or quarter season world champions. <laughs> With Joker. Quarter season. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so quarter season. Anyway, come, to, come to this split. And Chaogu actually do really well during the regular season, which kind of drew comparisons to Snake of the prior season. Um, because Chaogu does have some really, like, obvious weaknesses. Um, in terms of, like like I said, going into this season, people thought they were going to be really unadaptable. Um, they obviously showed in, if you go back and watch those Demacia Cup games that I'm talking about, um, they didn't know how to react to lane swaps. They didn't know how to react to like specific team compositions they had to go against because they hadn't had to face it in the LSPL. So um, as soon as they were thrown into the LPL, you see after the first couple of weeks, they really started experimenting with lane swaps. They were one of the teams that lane swapped the most um, throughout the entire season, even when you would think that you wouldn't want to lane swap in those situations because of mm -hmm. the champions that they chose. Um, so that was, and then it kind of forced them to become this team that now is usually at like a gold deficit off the bat. Um, and then they end up relying on their mid to late game team fighting. Um, a lot of that comes from their jungler Swift, who I mentioned, because now basically the, the entire team is designed around his engages. He usually spends the first bit um, farming, so he's not like a super heavy ganking jungler, um, which is another reason why they don't have like a significantly proactive early game. But mm -hmm. as soon as they group up to team fight, um, it makes a huge difference. And their 5v5 team fighting is honestly the best in the world, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, the lowdown on Chaogu. They just recently, um, faced IG, both IG and LGD, um, in going through the LPL playoffs, the LPL summer playoffs, and they lost, um, a best of five to LGD in the finals, which was surprisingly closer than I thought. Um, I didn't think LGD did play up to, like, their full capacity, um, but I was pleasantly surprised by Chaogu in terms of how they tried to respond to a lot of LGD's map movements. Mm -hmm. I thought it showed a lot of, um, like, intelligence that they hadn't had uh, pri previously in the season, so. Okay. So, I guess that's left with me. I guess I picked the last team, Invictus Gaming, a.k.a. my favorite team. So this, is, this works out well for me. Uh, IG is a team that... <laughs> If you know them, oh my god, the two staples essentially, IG and World Elite. IG was the team that always did really well in the spring, and then when it came to when it actually mattered in the summer, when it comes to, of course, World's Qualifications, they did poorly. Um, and so, in this, like, this season specifically, or at least for the past two seasons, I'd like to say their top lane has always been, like, just just very up in the air. They had Yongsu, they had Pokemon, I think Save was before Pokemon. They had that whole uh, pull and pu push and pull between Save and Pokemon, depending on Most who they wanted for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, and also games, Save Total War Save played. 
Yeah. He what played mid LeBlanc. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they had too many Koreans, so they had to figure out which one was the most valuable, essentially. And it came out that the most valuable was Rookie and Kakao. That mid lane, the mid lane jungle synergy was so valuable. And they ended up finding, and Pokemon was a player who didn't really perform. He was bad, Raz. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to it. perform. Well, perform. When your entire just, when yeah. your team treats you publicly like a meme, you know yeah. you're not doing so hot. Like... We'd like to give our MVP to Pokemon because he didn't screw up this time. Oh my god. <laughs> the greatest team environment. So so uh, Save, who's your favorite Chinese person on the team? Pokemon, and then he can't even say it with a straight face. He's like laughing and ashamed. It's so <laughs> terrible. But it's all right because the tie decided I'm going to be the most motivated player on this team. <laughs> he took up the reins. He became the top laner. He learned the champions, or at least he was picking them up by his master, PDD. <laughs> And he took the reins, and of course, at first, he was, he was shaky, he was pretty bad, but then he became, honestly, one of the... He still was very uh, up and down as a player. Um, but actually, he just he, he just became, I feel like, the emotional backbone of the team. He was very... He was he was strong, and when, in his good games, he was really good. Like, he was... I would say that he was the best um, in the region, in his good games. That's just... It's very high, very low, like, like kind of... A bit unfortunate, but it spoke a lot to the, the problems that plagued the team as well. The, the team, honestly, their greatest enemies were themselves, their mo their own emotions. If they were if they could play, if they performed, they played so well. And honestly, I think the biggest example or the best example, I mean, would be the the playoffs in which they played against Xiao Gun, in which they. Their early game was phenomenal in their, like, I think in game one. And then, like, they played extremely well. And then as the game went on, you, you realize that, okay, this is, they're starting to throw this game. And when they threw the game, the rest of the series just showed, I feel like it just showed tilt. Like, they never got to that level again. Um, but then, of course, you saw the, their games against EDG. And it, it really did feel like this team, you could never, you could never bet on the team, I think. This is this is the best, this is the worst like promotion of this team. Like, you can never made. bet on this team, <laughs> but they're gonna win. Never... I'm so convinced now. <laughs> Don't bet on this team, but but honestly, you look at this team, you look at the roster that they have. This like name by name, the only thing that was really holding them back was their own motivation. And what's better motivation? Literally, what is better motivation than Worlds qualification? And I've just recently, they have been storming through, like, EDG. They've been, like, showing themselves to be quite a force. So I think this would be the, this would be the time. And if, it, if it's Xiaogu, then, like, they've, they've beaten them in the early game before. And now you just got to tell them to keep their advantage and keep in the game. That's essentially what keep it is. Keep your dreams, IG. So. It didn't <laughs> work for WE, but keep your dreams. <laughs> keep your dreams, IG. <laughs> Alright, so Emily, Yo. this this matchup, how do you think is going to win this? Alright, so um, Chaogu is going to win this because you mentioned um, the... Uh, mid jungle synergy mm -hmm. um and i think there's a really interesting comparison in what rookie and cacao do versus what join v does for swift and that's mm -hmm. not to say in any way that join v is a better mid laner than rookie because i actually don't think that's true but mm -hmm. i think in terms of the way both teams work that's kind of like the core of the team is the mid laner and the jungle and then how yeah. they dictate the pace of the game now, you mentioned that IG has actually had really strong early games against Chaogu, but the thing is that Chaogu usually, um, in their most recent games, has had poor early games overall because Swift is primarily farming, and then, again, they rely on their mid-to-late game team fighting, which is usually initiated by Join and Swift. Um, mm -hmm. So I think in terms of that kind of matchup, previously when we saw IG performing um they were also relying on the late game and if that happens again against Chaogu they're just not going to be able to beat them in team fights um the i think there's going to be a lot of interesting like contested picks 
for example, during the playoffs, this entire matchup was pretty much decided by who picked Nidalee, um, which I think is really, really important because, again, both of these teams are heavily reliant on their junglers. So I think, like, Nidalee, Gragas, and Elise are probably going to be, like, super, super important to this matchup. Um, and obviously, LGD, when they won against Chaogu, they banned Nidalee every single game um, mm. because they just didn't want Swift on that champion. Um, because it, I think, in terms of the way Swift plays, Nidalee allows him to have a strong early game while still like farming up during the early game as well. Um, so it kind of takes away from his lack of ganking, his lack of pressure, and adds it just based on the fact that that's a champion, like like the way Nidalee's designed as a champion. So um, I think that will be a really hotly contested pick because they're not going to want that to go to Kakao either. Um, but I think just in general, um, again, when I watch these teams, um, a lot of the time they were forcing standard lanes. And while I did spend the vast majority talking about how Chaogu has lane swapped and they've tried to go away from standard lanes, I think the standard lane matchup favors them in the bot lane. Middle lane's kind of weird because IG is definitely relying on Rookie to farm up. And once he does, I think he does have the edge on Joinbee, even though Joinbee provides a lot of control um, on the center of the map for Swift. And then I actually think Zatai also beats uh, V. So it's really going to depend on how well Chaogu can force team fights. Um, but I have faith in them being able to do that just based on their playoff appearance against IG. Um, I thought it was it was a pretty good example of how that matchup will play out if mm -hmm. both teams play how they've been playing recently. Yeah. Makes sense? Okay. Well, for me, I feel like IG can take the series by essentially understanding that they need to split push. <laughs> like, they do have the best players, I think. Like, R Rookie is debatably best player in the world. He hasn't been playing one like one recently, but that's just... What can you do? Uh, Kakao is the same. Like, they have, like, like every time, every time I want to buff up a player, I realize I, I like, I second-guess myself too often. Essentially, it feels like they have the best players. They can play extremely well as a team, and they. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think Chaogu's bot lane is better than IG's bot lane. Yeah, uh, but. IG's bot lane. Uh, I don't... But no, at the same IG time, IG's bot lane, bot lane destroyed yeah. EDG's, right? So. Okay, we're trying to help you out here, Raz. No, no, we're trying to help I you think out. IG's bot lane is, like, legitimately the best if they want to be. If they give. Uh, if they give Kitties his champion, like literally just Don't Janna, run. like get Thresh, I guess. Just give him something <laughs> that he can play properly. And like any, he and had a pretty good properly. bard, huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. It's just hard to appreciate other bards on PYL and yeah. surround it. And sure, he has like a short. I mean, he's champion, literally the once... only other bard. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally the only one. <laughs> like he plays it really well, like extremely well. And if you give kid like any of the champions that he like sure quirky but i'd much prefer like his vein or his callista and like we're like if he even gets callista if that escapes picks picks and bans but like if you give ig's bot lane exactly what they they you like if they play what they're good at then they're perfectly fine like they're perfectly fine so i think that this team i think ig can take the game against Xiaogu by just simply being the better split pushing team and they've shown the ability to split push properly. So drafting. Yeah. <coughs> drafting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they're drafting is okay, okay, that's a really good point. Every time I tell myself I'm gonna mention it, I forget to mention it. They are the smartest drafting team, period. Legi I honestly think that they're the smartest team. Like when they prepare for a match, they actually kill drafting. And I don't know if it's Mafa or if it's just the team as whole, but it's like you can tell when they're actually prepared for a set and when they actually have their mindset in the game. A uh, really good example is just, like I always bring it up because I just always like it's like fond memories that always get left in my mind. Was when they faced against Snake and every other team was like, okay, how do we deal with Snake? Her, her, like in the spring split. <laughs> like, how do we, like we can't, we can't deal with this team, and they, uh, they had the greatest kind of uh, burst composition and vein on the side, but of course, 
for whatever reason, kid is has this thing with Vain where he's like, I'm, I, I can't, I can't play it, but when I do, I succeed, but I just can't. <laughs> So I, regardless, all the like, Trinity Force on Vayne. Oh, yeah, hey, hey, that's true. That's <laughs> true. That's memes, memes. Yeah, <laughs> IG will. I do think that IG will win. Like they will beat Jaku just based on the intelligence of the team. They know how to. They know they have the blueprint of winning the set. They just have to consistently follow it throughout the game. They just than, do what they do in playoffs and actually make the first move for once. Like Jesus yeah. Christ, they looked so good when they did that. But Damn. whether they do it or not is up for debate. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so I guess uh, I guess we should now go into who do we think is going to win out in these sets as like a kind of a vote. So EDG versus Snake. Let's let's throw in the votes. Let's throw in the ballot. I'll go in with I'll go in with EDG. I guess that's just the easiest answer. Emily. I'm going to go EDG. Kelsey. I mean, you can't see it, but I'm showing my shirt again, so it's excellent. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Got it. EDG. Jackson? Uh, I'm also going to go with EDG just because I don't want to get tossed up by the fact that they didn't perform well in playoffs. And while I do think this is Snake's best chance to actually win this set, I actually believe in Clear Love's statement is not just worlds, but as in, like, okay, we're going to show these motherfuckers what's up if we do bad periods. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to go with EDG as well. We got the EDG votes. All right. Uh, going for Chagu versus IG, let's do this, uh, Drexen. Um, I know, right? This is this is harder than I thought it'd be. Wow. <laughs> would, yeah, actually, it is to be honest, because I don't know what IG is going to show up, mm -hmm. but I can kind of I can kind of expect QG to at least be really good at team fighting and at least have really strong bottom lane. So. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to go with QG, but I will say that IG does have potential to win this set. I actually feel like this will be, a cl this should be a closer set than EDG versus Snake, pers personally, I feel. Okay. Uh, Kelsey? Yeah, I'm going to go Chaogu. Uh, I think that you can't bet on an inconsistent team, and I think that Chaogu has more consistencies than IG. Um, and then mm. the last performance we saw that Kind of the the main Trump champion was Nidalee, and IG won the games they had Nidalee, Chaogu won the games they had Nidalee, but then when Nidalee was banned, Chaogu came through at the end, so if you finally get the draft down and you eliminate the variables, um, I think Chaogu will have the advantage. You still get a better, like a larger game if you bet on the least consistent team, so... <laughs> Just... <laughs> although although I, yeah, do, I, do wanna, I do want to want to say if... I do want to see if IG can get away with the way they were playing, uh, like in the playoffs against Swift, and see how that goes. Because I think mm -hmm. that'll be an interesting matchup. All right, Emily. Um, I think the last time these two teams met, like I said, even when IG was like more proactive in the early game, um, Chaogu usually was able to come back through like late game team fighting, and I think that's what this set's going to come down to as well. Um, again, I don't think it, like, it's not a huge hard and fast, like, where in the first one I was just like, oh, EDG, because I do think IG has the potential to win this set, but I think Chaogu is more consistent, and they've already proven that they can be IG in a best of five, even when IG is playing pretty well, so. Okay. My vote is going with IG, not because, like, I, I rep IG, but I think that <laughs> the key pick will probably come in the mid lane. I think that if they can get to a specific or if they even can get just like even Victor. I know that Victor is probably going to be one of the larger contested picks as well. So Victor, Twisted Fate, either one. I don't even know which patch I mean, this is going to be on. That's probably a big deal actually. It's probably 5.15. Yeah. Okay. Join B did come out and say, you know, if Victor's up, he first picks it. So I, mean, mm -hmm. they, I think Chaogu values Victor enough. So Azir, Victor, I, I, I'll, I'll give it to IG. It'll be a really close set though. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely do think IG has potential to win this set, but I I don't, they, they, if they will, they would have to show up as as their best. They would have to be like playing at their peak. Join B's and rookies champion pools overlap a lot, and they're both kind of willing to play more fringe things as well. So mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people would hurt will be... you if you tried to compare those two directly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I think rookie is much better, but I think honestly, it's going to come down to jungle matchup a lot because mm -hmm. Swift and Kakao have both been pretty inconsistent in terms of where they put their early pressure and how much they apply this season. 
but I mm -hmm. think Kakao has a slight edge in that department, and Rookie has a slight edge. So I think, I mean, it'll be really interesting to see. So, but okay. I do think Chaogu will win just because I think they play better as a team. Okay, so Chaogu advances, EDG advances. Now it's going to be EDG versus Chaogu. Actually, that might not happen. Hmm. That might happen, right? Like there might yeah, be might. finals, right? Yeah, that might happen in round two. Wait. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. We're talking about the next round. Losers. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so, wait a minute. Uh... So, is it, so Saturday is going to be... Or no, Friday, excuse me. Friday will know the, the second seed for China. Because they're just going to do the first two upper... They're going to do the entire upper bracket on Friday. And then on Saturday, they're going to do the entire lower bracket. So we'll know the third seed after Saturday. Okay. So... So now with EDG versus Chaogu, it is literally going to be a debate, or at least just like point for point, with em Emily versus Kelsey. So, Emily, you're going Great. up against EDG. Okay. What's up? How are you going to do it? So, um, how QG beats EDG, it's going to be tough, but I don't think it's completely inconceivable, um, mainly because a lot of IG's problems, or, oh my gosh, a lot of EDG's problems um, that they showed in the playoffs came from inconsistency in their team fighting, and it'd be like one or two members at the time that just wouldn't seem to be on the same page as the rest of the team. Um, and I think that Chao Gu would definitely be able to take advantage of that, because again, they're the best 5v5 team fighting in, uh, team in the world. So in terms of the fact that EDG went through and they made all of these like weird roster changes throughout the season, kind of shattered their synergy for a bit, and they're still getting it back together. Um, I think if Chaogu was able to win against EDG, it would be in taking advantage of that fact and the fact that they've been playing together the entire season. Um, they have such a really good late game team fight and um, forcing EDG to team fight them would be in their best interest. Okay, Kelsey. Okay. So I'm I'm sort of rehashing my point about Snake, but with a caveat. So I said that EDG can snowball the early game really well, right? Mm. Uh, I think EDG are more likely to do this in standard lanes against Chaogu than against Sneak. Um, I think that lane swaps will actually work out better for Chaogu, and EDG are more comfortable in standard lanes. Anyway, and though Chaogu lane swapped a lot in the regular season, they did it less in the playoffs. We saw them just sending their duo lane bot a lot in the finals in particular. I think those bottom lanes are somewhat close, but dumb. I still would give it to Deft Mako. Um, and then, so if you have, like, if EDG has a situation where they have a favorable bot lane, that frees them up so much more, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Because otherwise... In a way, it's extremely telegraphed. Clear love will gank bottom lane. You know, pretty consistently. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, if they do have a favorable bot lane matchup, then there's a situation where Clear Love has a lot more freedom to kind of explore opportunities to have a counter jungle off of Swift. I think both of them are actually very similar players. Uh, I feel like Swift is a better version of what Clear Love was last year in terms of their how they play their early game. Swift is like a little bit inconsistent of where he wants to put his pressure, but he farms really well. Um, they both go for some of these counter jungling styles, and I think that Clear Love has the advantage there in both the consistency and what he's able to do. Um, I also think that in terms of the gold deficit at 20, EDG has the highest or the highest gold value at 20, Chaogu has the lowest. So even though Chaogu plays second overall in the regular season and won like the second most amount of games, they have the lowest gold value in a winning game in in wins, like the lowest gold lead in wins of any team in the OPL. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty telling of how hard EDG can take control of a situation like that against them. Um, <laughs> And I think that's what we saw in the last time these teams faced, right? Chaogu did beat them in some late game team fights, right? They got a Baron, they managed to come out, but then Koro had like this clutch play where he got TNT in the second fight and then EDG still won, just in part because they were already so far ahead, right? And mm -hmm. when Koro and Quillove are at least on point, 
like they don't have to be super consistent, then they can still control a situation as long as they're ahead. Um, so I think that Edward Gaming should be able to take advantage of both like early game freedoms from their jungler and bot lane advantage as well as uh, just being so far ahead that team fights don't matter essentially. You know, two players that know that feeling very well of having the low skill values, Deft and Pun. Uh, good old. I, I love using the Samsung blue jokes. All right, so, all right, so that here comes the question: Who do we think is going to win out in that specific set between Xiaogu and EDG? Let's have a vote on that one. Okay, so Michael as the third party, the third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I love that works with a four person show. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, I like to remove man, myself from. That's this. actually kind of hard. Yeah. Shit. Remember, Mako said he's imploding, but he said this to Rookie, right? Oh, so yeah. could be next level nine gaming, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. The plans are already starting. The the game already it's started. Already, we're just see? we're just not really. This yeah. is when okay, we're being okay, convoluted, um, but not actually serious. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna believe. Okay. So clearly, um, like Aaron was drugged in playoffs. So now, <laughs> I'm gonna actually rely on the fact. <laughs> I'm actually going to put my faith in EDG and say that they'll win if they, like, don't do whatever the fuck they did in playoffs, which is horrible drafting and way too much focal point on Pawn. Like, they need to mm -hmm. revert yeah. to Pawn. They need to revert Pawn to a play style where he's just either kind of does his own thing and if he goes ham, he goes ham, or he provides a distraction for the team. Like, he's enough of a nuisance that it allows clear love to get uh, and then Koro's, uh, yeah, sorry, hold on. He provides enough of a, of a nuisance so that Koro can stay self-sufficient and Kulov can focus on bottom to get depth ahead. If they can do those things and patch up their drafting, EDG should take this set. But playoff EDG would not take this set. So I'll still go with EDG because I think that having a blunder in one, like, playoffs ever it, shouldn't just It was the fact. literally two days. Yeah. Guys. Just, two just, days. Just a, yeah. yeah, so I, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna like wash that off and just say okay, this was just a, you know this was just a bad period for them like they had bad strategy maybe something bad happened to Aaron who knows, um, but it, it, it's relatively easy fixes, and so I think if they revert to their old play they'll, they'll be fine. So I'm gonna go EDG. All right, Kelsey, just food for thought. If two years in esports is an entire person's career, then maybe two days is is a season of like. Professional play. I don't know. We just. I mean, it could this, be. This is the stupidest. I don't even. Know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, this could be. Okay. <laughs> All right. All I right, mean, Kelsey? seven games is like half of an LCS split, right? So. Oh uh, God. Yeah. It's true. So, but. Yeah, I just when you look at the those thought. games, even though there were serious issues with their late game team fighting all ins or whatever it's um their early game i still they felt they had control at least in the lgd set mm -hmm. and they misapplied jungle pressure i feel but they still got an advantage in a lot of the jungle ganks mm -hmm. um it's just that a lot of the counter ganking they lgd or ig came with more than one person um so it's I think you can look over those games and identify where the problems were, and EDG players and coach have enough time and experience to be able to do that. So I still think that, yeah, it should be EDG. Okay. Emily? I actually, yeah, I don't think it's going to be super close, um, since they, they would be meeting at a best of five at this point, right? Yeah, so I think it's actually yep. going to be 3-1 EDG. Like, I think Chaogu can take a game, but I think that EDG is going to come in and not have a lot of those, because, like, it was more miscommunication, like, synergy errors, and I think they'll be able to shore those up by the time that they face it, like, if they were facing Chaogu and made it through the first round, I think they'd be they'd be fine. All those them. screenshots of uh, Mako just posting question marks in the perspective streams, like, question, 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 question. question. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah, I would give it to EDG just simply because I feel like throughout an entire five-game set, 
like the more games you have, like it comes down to the fact that you have to be more flexible as a team and having more picks lined up, more strategies lined up. And I think that at that point, Chagu will run thin on picks that will make them as good in team fights or as good with their specific strategies. And, and they're not even this good in sp one specific strategy, but it comes down to what's the best for our team fight. Um, okay, we'll have Victor. Okay, well, we'll take away Victor. And okay, we have Azir. And okay, we'll, we'll ban Victor, take away like... There's a lot they can do, and when you literally just have a mid laner that can play Katarina, Lux, and Vagar and not give it crap because legitimately your whole strategy is to just take attention away, then <laughs> have at it. Like, that is, uh, you Doin do B, you. You'd be surprised, you but Doin you. B's picks actually matter more to the composition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Than Pawns, even though he plays weirder shit, so yeah. there we go. So I guess that just look officially means, congratulations, Edward Gaming, you are the second seed in the China Talk Finals here. Woo! <laughs> Woo! China, China Talk Regionals. <laughs> China Talk Regionals. <laughs> Alright, and so that means that, of course, Chagu has been knocked down to the round two losers bracket, which still leaves Snake and IG. Yeah, Snake and IG go up against each other. So. Oh, I'm done. I can just be the peanut gallery now. This is excellent. Yeah, me okay. too. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, 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 because you still have to do your last round. Oh, right? wait, yeah. yeah. I still have to face one of these guys. Oh, right. God. So, yeah, Snake versus IG. Let's start off with Snake Michael. Um. Okay, so... I want to go with Snake here because... The thing you have I no don't... choice? The, no, because I literally drew oh. the team for you. Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, this is okay. What I'm supposed to be doing here is, all right. So what I dislike is putting, like, accounting for something to go perfect for a team when it usually doesn't, and it's more of a one-off. Which is why EDG was the exception when I said that EDG would beat Chaogu because that was a one-off in a negative light. Whereas I think that IEG showing up in the playoffs was a one-off in a positive light. And I feel like Snake has been a lot more consistent in their performance. Um, where And you can count on them to do certain things, right? You can count on them to do well in team fights. You can count on them to force those situations. And you can count on certain laners in that team. Whereas, when you're looking at Snake, or when you're looking at IG, you're looking at a team that kind of most of the time were extremely passive and didn't make the first moves. And that's horrible when paired with the fact that the team literally does nothing from behind. Uh, they found they found like a perfect formula in the playoffs, but I don't think that they're just going to get that perfect formula again, um, or that teams teams have scouted out IG and won't allow that to happen again, based on those games. And yeah, so Snake like Snake. The only way Snake loses the set, honestly, is if IG does the same thing. But that would also require um, the team to, like, not anticipate what's going to happen, which was the whole, like, snowballing Kakao ahead and, like, just blasting EDG's jungle. I don't think that Snake will just, like, let that happen. Mm -hmm. um, because they have they have had uh, better warding. And let's see. And I also, I also do think that even if Rookie is an amazing player... Um, that he's not, like, ultra-consistent either, honestly. Um, I know a lot of people say that, and I actually believe this too, uh, like, most of the year that he was the best mid laner in China, but I still feel like it kind of, it's kind of, like, random who shows up. I actually think that Kakao is probably the deciding factor in this match, and just for that alone, like, I think there's too much of, like, a luck factor on, like, if this happens then for IG. So I think just mm -hmm. based on... Just raw team fighting alone, I do think that Snake's going to win. Okay. Uh, I'll give it to IG, um, simply because of the Kakao matchup, like you mentioned. I think Kakao, he has always been a player who can affect matches in a positive light. Recently, I feel like it's just, as you said before, motivation and kind of like random plays and not... And honestly, the team has... IG as an organization has always been hyper aggressive, and then recently they've kind of taken this extremely passive you note. Know, but now they've been rather like, um, I would say aggressive again, but more calculated in a sense. But I think 
if he gets his Evelyn pick, if he gets... Honestly, if he gets anything, I think he'll just affect the matchup simply because he'll be going up against most likely Beast. And I think Beast has been a player that hasn't been really performing well for the team lately, and that's just going to be the deciding factor. I think that's just it. And See, how thing... he... Mm -hmm. okay. Go on. Based on the interview, I, I kind of feel like CCR will be playing. Based on the fact okay. that they interviewed the team, and they interviewed Martin and CZR, and they were talking about the ED2 matchup. So I yeah. kind of feel like they'll play ZZR in regionals. I mean, my and thing, my thing yeah. with this matchup is, like, I will not deny that Kakao is, like, infinitely better than Beast, but to circumvent Beast having weaker, uh, like, matchups, they'll usually just roam with him mm -hmm. as a team to get things done so that you don't have to worry about the individual jungle matchup. And I think that's what they'll do to circumvent the jungle skill disparity, but... I just feel like this is going to be one of those rare instances in which IG has a more stable roster <laughs> than any other team here. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> Like the they haven't changed in such a long time. They've just played their roster all season. So just like uh, just all having summer. just having a consistent lineup and knowing that these players are actually gonna be like motivated in a sense, but at the same time these players are really good in their own right. So against Chagu, I mean Snake. Same teams apparently. Against Snake, uh it's I feel like Snake's gonna have too much to catch up on. With time, I think Snake can do, like can really perform well as a team, as a unit. But right now, they're I feel like they're still in the building period. All right, let's go into voting time. It is the election time, everyone. Uh, Emily. All right. So in this case, I think it's one of the few instances where the top lane matchup is going to end up being really important. And in that case, I honestly think Flandra is going to crush Zatai. Not that I think Zatai is like super bad or anything. So he's really improved. Um, but in terms of like other LPL top laners versus a tie and then like Flandra versus a tie, I think it's one of the few matchups that's really not in his favor. Um, especially the way that um, they really try to get Flandra going now as opposed to last season with, where it was all about Crystal. And then I don't know, I really like Snake's team fighting and skirmishing thanks to you. And I just can really can't bet on that. <laughs> So, I'm gonna go Snake or okay. Andy. Alright. And uh, now from the peanut gallery, Kelsey. Huh. Um, so this is actually really, really hard. Because, mm -hmm. like Emily said, I think it is very top. This matchup is very much about the top lane. But the, these teams have actually been pretty close. Um, like, IG 2 owed them the last time they played each other in week 11. Um, Snake and IG had a best of five that went to five games in Demacia Cup, even though Snake won. But it was like the first couple games IG was in their mode of not caring, so they still managed to like win two games after that, which is really impressive. Um, I think Flandre can be extremely inconsistent but so can Zatai so I feel like that's why the matchup is almost so much un so unstable is because in a way I feel like these top laners are almost cut from the same cloth yeah. um, and and both of them will try to kill you right so they're yeah. not going to play have this it's not going to be one of those matchups where the top laners just like farm and they play from behind like it will be in an edg game or it will oh, be a matchup yeah. where the top laners are just like steady like in an lgd game you know yeah. um it's going to be really kind of explosive and so i think it Even though it's so... I just... I see... If they ca if they do show up, I see this being a matchup where Kakao goes top. Um, and so I think that can be something that will be a huge factor for them. And... It's so hard, because I you feel like Snake, Snake should be the better team, right? But I actually think IG wins. <laughs> So there hard. we go, we did it! Um, I actually, yeah, and that's like depressing because I feel like Snake should go to Worlds, but if this matchup happens, they'll lose. Yeah, it's gonna be so, probably their hardest um, matchup, I think. Well, yeah, because I think Snake EDG. beats Shaogu, mm -hmm. and I think they're actually even, yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, it's so I'm saying IG. Okay, we got an IG. <laughs> we got a very reluctant IG, and we have a snake. Okay, this could go to a tiebreaker. Okay, Michael. Yeah. So I kind of realized that I messed up my last segment a bit, and Cardi kind of already explained the matchup thoroughly, rather than actually uh, defending Snake for the most part. But I kind of hold true to what I said earlier in that I still feel like. The, the only th and I'm not saying it's not a possibility, because it really is. The only thing I don't like about vouching for IG here is just I don't want it to be like a, well, if, if the stars align and everything goes perfect, then IG will take it. Uh, but Kelsey did actually bring up some good points about the matchup. Um, but even so, um, even though even though Zatai is, like, inconsistent and Flanders inconsistent, I actually feel like the team can do like again the thing the thing is is that if snake if snake has inconsistencies or weaker matchups they know how to work around it and i don't think ig does mm -hmm. and i think that's like the biggest thing for me i think that snake is a lot better at just like oh well we're having issues okay well we'll just run like we'll just like teleport here and all go together and then and like gank and then force 5v5s all day um whereas i don't think ig has that ability like if they have a weaker matchup and they fall behind, they're just like, uh, what do we do, guys? I don't know. And then they just, like, fall over and die. Um, and since I've only seen one set where IG's been proactive, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and still say Snake will win. But, I mean, if IG does manage to stay proactive, sure, IG can win. But just off of what I've seen throughout the entire split, I'm going to have to stay with Snake. Okay, so we have Emily with Snake, Draxton with Snake. And Kelsey with IG. I would be voting IG, and but since I am the host, their tiebreaker is me taking my away my own vote, so Snake wins. <laughs> <laughs> I also new, new I also think like introduced. the big thing is that I think IG does have the best drafting in regionals, and Snake actually has the worst. So yeah. that's like the other issue that I have. But yeah, I do think because it's just so dumb. Such a dumb matchup. Anyway, okay, Snake wins. Moving on. <laughs> Snake goes up. <laughs> that changed quickly. <laughs> Fuck this. I can't. I can't bear the burden of voting for IG. <laughs> it's faithful. I never vote for IG. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You like betray your like, own being. All right. Chalgu Reapers versus Snake. Oh god, it's the LSPL matchup. The bopping of the century. Alright. Yeah, we all so, remember how exciting that used to be. <laughs> Alright. Emily. Yo. G give us the give us the info. Okay. How is how is Chaogu gonna do it? Alright, so um how Chaogu wins this matchup, I think it is gonna come from the jungle. Um, primarily because if this is on five point fifteen or even if it's on there's a chance there's still a chance it could be on five point sixteen, right? Maybe. We don't I think. Know. Oh, it, I don't it, think or is it definitely 5.15? I think it's definitely 5.15. Okay. Because um, don't they keep it even with Korea now? Yeah, Pretty much. So. Except for, mm. I think Korea actually started 5.15 earlier in their playoffs, but. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, anyway, regardless. So, 5.15, that still works. Um, basically, my point is that we all saw, like, Beasts in Italy. Um, and we all saw, even if we're playing. <laughs> Even if they're going. playing, even if they're playing ZZR, I just don't think that. I think that there are too many champions that Chaogu can put Swift on that he's really comfortable with. That even if he doesn't end up creating like this ridiculous early pressure, he'll still be able to counter jungle and farm really well. Um, and then again, in the like mid game, they'll just be able to rotate and out team fight um, Snake. Although I will say this, Snake's team fighting is also really really good. Um, so this matchup would be very interesting because you probably would see a lot of elaborate 5v5 team fights, um, where both teams are, like, very well coordinated because what, um, Doinby kind of does for Swift in creating that, like, steadiness, I guess, on the map and creating a partner that can go in and protect Swift when he does kind of weird, makes those weird decisions, um, 
I think you does the same exact thing for Flandre, actually, um, because where Flandre might go in and it would be a mistake, I think that you ends up kind of saving him a lot in team fights and skirmishes. Mm -hmm. um, but then if I'm comparing the two teams, I still would give the edge to Chowgu in that. But I think it's very close because I also do respect Sink's team fighting a great deal. All right, Jackson. Give us the um, go ahead. Uh, first, wait, which one? Sorry. Explain I'm so distracted because, like, snake. I guess hmm? I was snake 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 so, so, sorry, the, the fucking construction is, like, so distracting. Um, I yeah. Words. Um, give us the jackhammer. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually go with Chow Gu for this one because. You're supposed to tell us why Snake is gonna win. Yeah. You're already failing us. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh. <laughs> not even, not even Snake thinks Snake will win, guys. We're out of here. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, so if Snake, damn it, this is so hard though because I feel like Snake's way of winning is like Chao Gu's forte, man. Yeah, Why? Because much. I think Snake is a better team fighter than Chao Gu. Boom. There you go. No. Get wrecked. Maybe, maybe in straight. That's the construction God, side going. Can't do this. Ugh. How do I say that Snake is better than Chagu? Fuck. Uh, okay. Uh, alright. Let's see here. Fuck, this is so fucking hard, dude. I don't know if I can do it, guys. It's fine. I really, Kelsey? I really come don't- Come in. Really don't. Subbing in. Sub, like, Dina Martin right, to his crystal. I mean, if you give me five minutes, I can actually even change my shirt, because I have a snake shirt, but no, we'll just go on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do this. Like, because, uh, fuck, I, I, like, I'd be doing the wrong thing if I just said why they can't do it. Damn it. Mm. That's yeah. uh, I actually think the only way Chagu wins this is if they do lane swap. Um, mm. Because I do think that that's the weakness where they have their advantage. I think that the way that you approaches the team fight is so intelligent and patient that, I mean, they can literally, if everyone goes in and blows their stuff, he'll still have his ult and he'll still win. That's like, I kind of feel like he just, he holds it so well. And he'll always get your carries, and there are these situations where, like, even if he loses lane, or even if Chow, or even if Snake loses lane, there's they always have this like pocket trap guard. And these teams are similar in a lot of ways, except that I think that um, the way that the coordination between Flandre and Yu works is actually almost better than the coordination between Swift and Stoinby, just because I do feel like Flandre is almost more reliable than Swift in terms of his craziness working out. I think some of Swift's craziness is just too crazy. Um, He's just like, <laughs> jumping in, guys, you can't stop me. And, uh, I'm going in, the only and they ain't coming back. The only responsibility Flandre really has is getting ahead, whereas Swift also has the responsibility of being a jungler and keep ganking bottom lane, which... Bottom lane can be really strange for Snake because I think Martin is inconsistent and really weird and that's like probably if TNT and TCT can do really well in bottom lane, I think that's another way that Chogu can win. But TCT and TNT just have not been doing well bottom lane in isolation by themselves. So and I think again it comes down to the sport. And Ella is so good as an I'm going to hold my AD carry's hand type support that he does make lanes go at least even all the time. Um, so for me, it's just like Snake has better team fighting in these and more patient team fighting, and Chao Gu can win in a lane swap situation, but I don't see like V is just going to get crushed by Flandre. Um, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I yeah, think so. And you and Doin B is an interesting matchup, but I ultimately think that like even Doin B is going to have some trouble there. Cause Doin B, Doin B is weird. Doin B, I don't think is like super good, but he's, he's just important. weird. He's important. He's like incredibly Who wants important. Snake isn't weird. Yeah, I mean. I like feel like these teams are so weird. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to describe doing <laughs> but me because I do it's think, like... I think Snake you know has what? an advantage over Chagu, so... We're doing it. We're voting right now. Okay. <laughs> Kelsey, 
Who do you think is gonna win this one? I mean, I just said snake. So. Okay, there we go. That was not <laughs> <in front. laughs> Okay, Drexen. Uh, I mean, I want to be able to convince myself that Snake is a better team, but I just can't because can't do it. even if even if Snake is better than a straight up five v five, which I actually don't really agree with, uh, I still think QG is better with skirmishes, and I do think that even though they're bad in lane, I do think their duo is better in team fights. So, all right. Um, I mean, I could see the Flandre V thing, but even then, I don't I don't see it as like a smash. I see it as like Flandre is like a better top laner, not like massively so either so i don't know all right we're tied one piece we've got snake and Chaggy. emily all right um so i think it's gonna be close um and even though i argued for Chaggy, um i actually think snake takes this and again God it's damn it. primarily because of the top lane matchup um because like i voted Fondra over zatai right and i think mm -hmm. zatai is a better top laner than me um, okay. and additionally, wow, because, yeah, yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, I agree with her. What? Yeah. I actually, I actually did. Actually, what is wrong with V? Dude? Actually, I no, I think if they let V play like Fondra and Zatai, he would be good. Like, he'd be yeah, really but good. Don't. But, but he, they he don't. Can't. He's he's in the yeah. same position as Fondra was last split. year. Yeah, last split. split. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Um, okay, duty. I do disagree. So he has to be, he has to be this guy. So, I do disagree with Kelsey that their 5v5 is better than Chaogu's, because I actually still think Chaogu's is better. Um, but in terms of just knowing how to play the map better, um, I think, I don't know, I, I give that edge to Snake. Um, and I also think that they're good enough in team fights that they wouldn't fall, like, ridiculously far behind in t uh, through team fighting. Um, and then, obviously, the, the Flandre V matchup, like I said, and then bot lane's really weird for me because it depends on the supports. Um, and then that I would have to give the edge to Ella in Definitely, lane. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But then in terms of team fighting, I do think TNT is like way better than Martin. So, okay. um, but I don't know. I think I think in the end, I mean, if Martin gets down... Jinx, that's like his one good team fighting yeah. champion, right? So. Um, I do think it's going to come down to Flandre and Unfortunately, Yuzo. if he does get Jinx, uh, Ella is willing to throw his body on the grenade yeah. for you, you know. I don't know the, any part of that song except for that one part. But <laughs> so. Poor Ella. That poor guy. <laughs> oh, God. So, okay, we have, we have two votes for Snake, one vote for... I. Um, Chagu, and of course that already means my opinion doesn't matter, but my opinion matters to me, okay? So It matters to me too, Raz. I actually am really curious about this because I think yeah. it's super close. Um, okay. I, I, like, going into playoffs, I said that if Chagu and Snake ever face, it's going to be like the most interesting matchup for me, so... Yeah. I would give it to Chagu, funny enough. Simply because I think that the, like just watching the LGD match, no matter how often LGD fucked up. <laughs> I think that Chagu showed a real ability to team fight. And of course, like, and skirmish. And like, anyone can say the same about Snake. And they have amazing mechanical players. That's true. But I think how Chagu played out their, like, I don't want to say their spacing, but how they utilized their tanks, how they were able to really just set up these fights so well and i guess even though they have like mostly like a non i wouldn't say non-existent early game but it's kind of like he farms a lot yeah, I was gonna say, it's pretty <laughs> yeah it's pretty not there but he's he does like position himself to be able to counter gank probably like to save his lanes properly so i i want to say chagu plays out team fights better and i think that's what it comes if both teams Regardless of the lane matchups, if both teams literally just come down to the one idea of team fighting, Chagu should edge out very, very slimly. Uh, but I think they come ahead, and I think that you, like you said, it, you made the point about you uh, playing team fights extremely well. But I want to see the mid lane matchup is going to be the one that dictates a lot of it. If he gets a zero, that I think that's going to be used best champion for this specific matchup 
I don't know if he will, and I'm not sure, and I'm not, I don't really have a lot of faith for the other picks that he's willing to go for, because if Victor comes out, then I think that they are able to really just jump on Victor, and none of the other team, like, I think the rest of Snake will just kind of not, they won't be able to pick it up. That's just my, I don't know, that's how I feel like it, that's how the set comes down for me. But, unfortunately, uh, Snake has already come out the leaders here. They are they are the third team heading to the China Talk Worlds. <laughs> I feel like I I feel like I have to go rewatch Snake and QG games because I actually don't see a case where Snake's better at straight up five v five than QG did in the playoffs. But I could be wrong. I'm ready. A lot of Snake either. versus QG games are like really weird. Yeah. Well, I don't mean because I don't mean they're that decided match by I mean, I mean, Flandre like, doing like, dumb shit. So. <laughs> Um, it's like super strange, but uh, I, I don't know. I just this will yeah. be fun. We don't. No It'll one knows who's coming in as, as the third seed, and that's I probably mean, the I best. Think in every... Ultimately, yeah. we just agreed that Chagu would make it anyway because I said that IG would be Snake, and then Chagu I think is going to be IG again. So yeah, it would be the same result. We'll see. We shall see. We'll see. Weekend. All right. That's that's already the greatest wrestling promotion. We sa- we shall see this weekend at the pay per view. See this weekend. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's the end of the episode here, right? Uh, nothing really else to talk about in the Chinese League of Legends. Or um, maybe EDG will just completely bomb out, and we'll have Chaogu and Snake going to Worlds, and then. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Please no. <laughs> and then everyone's gonna be like, "Who are these Koreans? How did a team with no name Koreans <laughs> join B? Who is join Ella? B, Ella. Why, do you say Reapers, though? Like, super why does this team have? Why is this team playing with only one Korean? One of the one of the other ones must be Koreans. No. Okay. What is the Spanish player named Aya in the bottom? Line? What is the support? Uh, <laughs> wow. Aya. Oh god. All right. All right. So let's do some uh, shout outs. Uh, Jackson, kick us off here. All right. So as usual, shout out to the lovely panelists, and then also Esports Heaven, and then um, yep. <laughs> All I got for you guys. He has some interviews and stuff with Snake players. Yeah. yeah, the rookies of Snake that are hopefully showing up. Otherwise, it's not all that relevant. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're hopefully. gonna play ZZR because why mm-hmm. would they? Yeah. Why would ZZR they... talk about the Clear Love matchup like I... if he's not gonna play Clear Love? Yeah, I agree. Like I said, that does, <laughs> does kind of bother me because he's just like he's like Harald's fucking Clear Love, and I don't like I don't like that mentality when he's you're. He's like facing someday him. I want to be able to play like Clear Love. <laughs> Yeah. Clear no, love you, is so good. You kind of had that attitude, right? Where he was like super depressed, and he's like, "I don't even feel like I'm good enough to ask Pawn what to do." <laughs> <laughs> well, that now he's, he's saying that he time. wants to prove that he's the best. He wants to be the best mid in LPL now. So that's good. Maybe he's, he's changed his attitude. I was gonna say Maybe. that's a better attitude. Than and he did say, himself. and he. Did like have a? There was another translation of something else where he was talking about Pawn that I initially read as there was no way I was ever going to be as good as Pawn and play for Pawn. But apparently the actual translation was like even if I became better than Pawn, they I wouldn't have a chance to play. So oh yeah, that's like day and day and night there. Anyways, yeah, so that's a yeah. lot different. Yeah, we'll see. Right. I think I think Snake will be pretty good. Also, shout outs to Hideo Kojima. Also a fan of Snake. <laughs> you can play him tomorrow. Oh wait, today if you're watching this. Oh there man, go. it's gonna be good, guys. I'm hype. Oh, the hype. It's real. not. It's not voiced by David Hayter though. I mean, that's the sad part. That is pretty sad, actually. It is. Kelsey. So shout outs to the score. Uh, I did that really long article about Chao Gu where I compared them to Snake. I'm going to do similar articles on the other regional teams this week. Tomorrow is EDG day. I'm finally able to release the Clear Love interview that I did. So that's while I was in China. So that's fun. Um, and yeah, also shout outs to Emily, who is coming out with apparently a bunch of stuff this week. So oh, 
Sweet. I like bunches of stuff. Oh. All right, shout outs to LL Esports and Liquid Legends, just because I have a bunch of stuff coming out. Um, a Korean regional preview, Chinese regional preview, a bunch of individual team things, and then um, more individual team things on Liquid Legends for their regional previews. So, And I also wrote, oh, okay, so I actually have an article I'm really proud of, um, and some of it's still relevant, even though SKT absolutely obliterated KT in the finals. Um, I did, like, a SKT-KT preview that I really liked uh, because I talked about a lot of the differences in Korea this year as opposed to previous years. So if you're at all interested in that or the history between those two teams, you can check that out. It's on Liquid Legends. The way I like to start off of uh, introducing my topics is, like, I'm actually really, uh, uh, you know, proud of one of my articles. <laughs> it rarely happens. <laughs> but no, that was, yeah. Okay, so my shout outs is Dignitas. No, Rock Solid EU. <laughs> I was going to do that one of these days. Uh, uh, Diggy. Uh, so, good stuff. Good good jokes. I wanted to. Okay, I kind of messed that one up. Anyways. But that's the Chiefs. They did pretty well. You good jokes when you make the joke. But oh, well. that's true. Oh, yeah, Chiefs. Shout outs to the Chiefs as well. They did really, yeah, as Emily did, said, uh, they did really well. Um, and they're going back home. Uh, Shout out and... to your blog post about experimentation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that was yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was God. really good. What the fuck? You need to check it out. And so, there we go. Thank you. Uh, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, I made a entire blog post about experimentation. The bullshit idea of, oh my god, we should value all of these games. Um, <laughs> and what... <laughs> yeah, actually, okay, so I did a really bad job of defending China on SI, but I did actually want to bring that up because um. I didn't even bring up the whole sandbagging thing because that's a whole other issue. But in terms of experimentation, why I've actually really enjoyed watching China and some of the things I've really enjoyed watching Korea is because, as um, was pointed out on that show by Monty himself, they, there's so many more games. And so when you have that many more games, you get to experiment, like throwing Aurelia mid and throwing Master Yi mid um, mm. and doing all sorts of things like that. Um, I mean, it's it's a hard and thing so, to win, though, because Korea's caught up in quantity of games, but it's context that matters, and, like, yeah. People, yeah. people don't... The value, like, but I mean, just scrim in, culture being different is, like, a Yeah, the scrim culture is even, different. Even but still. Even like, just in, like, comparing this year's Korea with past years, like, you cannot tell me that every single time SKT loaded up into a game, they were like, we are taking this 100% seriously, we're playing all of our best champions no like and that doesn't mean they're not playing to win either that's totally not the point the point is that it gives you a chance to try out different things in a competitive environment and i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing and when you say experimentation maybe that makes me a huge plebe whatever yeah. and when you say experimentation like i said earlier is it's not about being super calculated and this is how we're going to plan our time to learn to develop these weaknesses it just means you know what, we suck at lane swapping, maybe we should lane swap this game, even if it doesn't make any sense, because we suck at lane swapping, hey! And then they go in, to... and they still suck at lane swapping, but maybe yeah, they learn something. Point. I gotta make this point, because it's okay. like, I gotta make this point, because it's like a really bullshit concept of, oh, we play more games, therefore they, they have the same value, correct? No, like in China, in, in Korea, like, legitimately, A, the placements of the teams matter if you go into uh, playoffs. Like first, second, third seed, fourth seed, that's all decided based on your re regular season play. And that wasn't even true for China up until later, like legitimately like week seven halfway, or something. Like week mm -hmm. seven. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, even before that, take that away, and it still has less value in China, simply because in Korea, it's a lot more competitive. Like SKT can do what they want. Sure, they can play... Uh, like, Aurelia Med, Master Yi Med, sure, they can, like, uh, swap around their rosters like EDG has been doing, maybe to a lesser extent now lately. But for the rest of the teams, literally five places out of ten. Like, that's, that's like, half, that's already immediately, as like, really competitive in terms of, like, who's going into playoffs, who's not going into playoffs. You talk about, like, China, that's eight places. 
eight teams. Oh, a good portion of those teams suck. So you can see teams like Vici. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. Vici, OMG, <laughs> they suck. But I, I still think like the rest of the teams are pretty. Like we just agonized for an hour and a half, right? About mm -hmm. who's gonna win IG versus Snake and who's gonna win Snake versus Chaogu, right? So. Yeah. But like getting these teams and having like their goals getting into playoffs, that's an easy goal. Like not even just easy, not so much for like obviously teams that are not so developed, like World Lead or um, M3. But the goal, for, if you if you are legitimately Chao Gu or um, Snake, and you are pretty confident that you're getting into like playoffs, knowing that how the what's it called, how the bracket's going to be. You're going to be pretty. You're not going to take the game as value. Like it's not going to have as much value as any other team. You can go into a game and say this is this is not going to matter as much. And but... I, for the regular season teams, games they go in and they don't really have a plan. It's like that's what we're saying. We're not saying that they have some sophisticated plan and they're experimenting and calculating how they're going to do this. It's not what we're saying at all. You're just supporting our fucking point now. Oh, my... <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And to reiterate my points, I'm not. We're really upset that Monte Cristo has this opinion. I'm upset that nobody had this opinion before he said something, and now everybody like will not get off his dick. Like seriously, please. I'm sure he would even prefer that you just fucking think for yourself. Like, do not take his word for the Bible. Like, just watch the games yourself. Like, and go to the regular games and formulate your own opinion. Like, watch and think. See what you think. And like, obviously, don't just I think. Monty has reasons for his opinion, but anyway, keep, please continue. No, I was just gonna say, like, just don't, just, just don't, don't put so much value on someone that's frankly not as educated as other people in the Chinese region. Like, there's simply too many games for him to be able to analyze every regular season Chinese game to the level that some of us do. Like, I'm sorry, it's true. I mean, sure, we don't have like thousands and thousands of fucking Twitter followers, but that's irrelevant. Like, people are like, okay, he's the face of analysis, so it must be correct. And you know what? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't think it is. Most of us don't share that opinion, but please just watch the games and fucking make your own opinion. Like, don't just parrot someone from the community that is an expert in another region. Like, people shouldn't parrot any of us. Like, formulate your own opinions. Like, sure, you can come to experts for the quick rundown on any given topic, but you can still formulate your own opinion if you if you're if you're conflicted on something like one way or another. It doesn't have to be like well, I'm going to listen to these two popular figures that haven't shown credentials that they know anything. Uh, just yeah, just find out yourself. It's possible. So the word it's of the hard. day is debate, uh, and of course information. Like everybody, I, I, I know a lot of people watch LPL, and it's it's great having those discussions I with agree. those people. If, if I agree with Monty, if we did explain away every bad thing a Chinese team did with, oh, they're experimenting or, oh, they're sandbagging or, oh, this game doesn't yeah. mean anything. That would be yeah. really fr frustrating and infuriating. Like, that would be stupid analysis, but... Exactly. If you watch the show, maybe you can tell me I'm wrong, but I don't think that's what we do. So... Mm -hmm. No, we just talked about a lot of bad things. Too. I'm pretty sure we talk about Chinese teams sucking more than anyone else. Yeah, actually, we are legitimately the biggest downers when it comes to Chinese teams. Like, like, every week we're always like, oh, these guys suck. How about really this team? Well, how, how bad are they sucking this week? Oh my god, this is awful games. Another week of awful stuff. Literally, you we just have to go through the first five minutes yeah. of every China talk. First five minutes, and we're like, oh, this week is awful. So, <laughs> we're like, yeah, the week coming up is going to be bad, so we're going to talk about LSPL and catch you up on that. <laughs> we're talking about we bad Chinese teams. We literally did have a week where we did that. So, if you don't even want to be informed about the games themselves and just of our opinions, hey, we are what? We're literally, this is China Talk, where you're watching the show. So, let's, let's talk about what we have said on this show consistently. Every week. We don't even have to watch every episode. Just pick randomly three episodes and you can find our opinions on them. So that's always lovely. And with that being said, bow. I guess this is time that for us to wave us off here, guys. Again. Yeah, you know, wave us off again. I'm supposed to come prepared from with Metal Gear Solid memes, but I didn't. Uh, welcome everybody to episode fifty seven of China Talk. This is the regionals episode. The regionals are coming. The regionals are coming. It's the worst. 
worst reference I've ever made in my life. Okay, so Edward Gaming, Invictus Gaming, Chaogu Reapers. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of sad they didn't name themselves the Reapers to make it that much more awkward for the EDG matchup. Uh, and Snake Esports. So, four teams, two slots. And of course, it's double bracket and all. So, we, like for this episode, we are defending. We've randomly drawn like team names and we are essentially going to be defending these teams and their run through the regionals and their chances essentially we're going to have debate topics this is going to be this is going to be a thing so uh let's go person by person to see what we drew drew out uh let's go michael jackson what'd you draw snake <laughs> snake <laughs> Yeah. All right. He's not dead yet, okay? <laughs> In case people have been not watching LPL but watched this show for some reason for the last, like, <laughs> 10 weeks <laughs> or 12 weeks or whatever. Uh, Snake is a team that is still kind of new to LPL in the sense that they joined last spring. And uh, everybody, everybody that tuned into LSPL kind of thought it was between them and King to like rise up and be super good and the King thing didn't happen that's for damn sure um, so even though they were really good in the off season when Snake came into the LPL they actually um, they got away with uh, like playing really well but they were really really one dimensional in their play but nobody really knew how to handle their one dimensional play so what they did really well when they actually were able to do it was incredibly strong and they were doing really well in the regular season until the playoffs came and people were a little bit more prepared and they were ill prepared for uh, like a best of five against LPL teams and uh, oddly enough they went against King who they did uh, defeat but it was a very very close set when in the regular season the disparity between the two King or the two Kings the two teams was uh, yeah was was pretty huge at that time or at least it looked like and then after that you kind of learned uh, Snake kind of learned that by getting crushed by... Right. So, mm -hmm. um, they went into the spring season playing kind of a disjointed style, but they were still extremely good at, you know, winning some of their lanes. Like, Koro had gotten significantly better at being self-sufficient and playing lane really, really well. Pawn was really, had really strong lane pressure. Um, their bottom lane was still kind of questionable. They had, like, a support who wasn't that good at the time, and then... And they played with Deft. They had a snake game where they got 2 out, and immediately, like, they bring in... Well, not immediately, but the next week, they bring in another support named Mako. And mm -hmm. Clearlove's jungle pressure seems to improve significantly over time. He's ganking bottom lane a lot. They're a very bottom lane-centric team. And ganking, in a recent interview, Mako actually said, our bottom lane isn't even the best in LPL. We just win a lot because Clear Love makes us win. Um, then you have Koro and Pan who play extremely self-sufficient solo lanes. They had a ridiculously good spring season where they went nearly undefeated. They had some stumbling in playoffs where they said they had trouble practicing because Pan was sick. Um, they went to MSI. They did really well at MSI except for the one game against SKT where Apparently, they decided to wing a composition that the players wanted to try, okay? Mm. Um, and then they did much better in a much better planned out series against SKT in the finals and won, but it was still very close games, obviously. Um, and then they went into this new season with a very, very puzzling approach where they were playing a different top laner, Amazing J, and a different mid laner, Bami. And they started to lose a lot of games, it didn't look so good, they were saying that they wanted to give newer players time to play, but they were also saying that both of their solo laners were coincidentally sick at the same time. So, but then the playoffs format changed, and suddenly Koro 1 and Pawn were magically healed, and... <laughs> by the power of Sanchao. By the power of Sanchao, yes, Sanchao is our lord and savior. <laughs> um, and they you know, just started stomping again. They went undefeated, 21 games. This is sound familiar, guys. 21 undefeated games, you know, maybe Fnatic storyline. Mm. Um, they went into the playoffs. Maybe the Chiefs. Woo! <laughs> they went into playoffs. Clear Love said, if we stumble in playoffs, we'll win worlds. If we just easily win playoffs, we... Make this... Okay, never mind. It's a shitty, uh... That's a shitty narrative. I was gonna say EDG revenge on their mid lane for Pawn, but no, yeah. Uh -huh. anyway, EDG's old mid laner Yu came in and 
he gets I, I feel like he actually gets a lot more freedom on this team than he did on EDG and I think it pays off really well and I think that's a huge deal for Snake. So um yeah. That's that's kind of where we are come the playoffs. Oh, and also Beast had a ZZR contesting for his spot, but I do believe that they are using Beast for the playoffs. So uh, I don't really know yet, but it's probably a good idea that they use Beast just because he's more experienced. And ZZR had mentioned that he like looks up to and respects Clear Love, which could be a bad sign because if you think you're strictly inferior to your opponent in a playoff match, then they'll probably mess with their head. Um, so good choice by them. Uh, and Ella is obviously already pretty good. And Flandra, Flandra, this is, uh, I don't know why I didn't bring this guy up. So he was forced into like so many Maokai games and and stuff like that that wasn't that he wasn't really familiar with in the spring split. Whereas in LSPL, he's always a, uh, a carry top laner using utilizing like really strange builds and and champions and stuff like that. And to an extent, mm -hmm. they, they kind of found like a really good even ground with this guy. Like they finally got it. Like sometimes he still goes a little bit too ham, but they got they kind of got it right with a balance with this guy. Like now he is a carry top laner, but he's like. A little bit more reliable, like a little bit more meta, like not so unreasonable with his. Well, sometimes not so unreasonable. Like they're they're, they're still fine tuning him. He's like a he's like an instrument. Like he's he's really nice once you like tune it, but it's like it sounds all shitty when when you don't tune it. I don't know if that where that reference is going, but anyway, that's Fondra. And so mm -hmm. they have a lot of reliable threats on Snake. And um, even though I still kind of think that they are too reliant on the five v five team fight that uh, through exploring all these methods of playing the game, they've, or at least my uh, my hypothesis is through exploring all these uh, methods of playing the game, they found ways not so much to win games using other strategies, but to for force these 5v5s to happen. Um, so that's kind of where the snake is and how they came up. But weren't right, they just so... bad at those other strategies? Mm -hmm. I mean... Yes. Yeah, we actually agree with that. We actually think they weren't as bad at some of these experimental strategies, okay? We're not saying that they're, like, super awesome. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I expelled the salt, so... Yeah. I think I think Snake, like... I think what's really cool about Snake, though, is just that it felt like in spring they had no idea how to use a regular season to prepare for playoffs, and then it was the polar opposite in this season. Like, they understood that they had to use these... Oh wait, never mind. There's no experimentation. Blah, blah. No, but no. They, seriously, they understood that they had a long season, and they knew that they were they were likely to make playoffs. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. just based on prior performances and the fact that even in the beginning they were still pretty well in the standings, so they could afford to do these kind of things and prepare. So now now they use summer to learn a lot, and I really like that. And I don't think it was something like where they came in and they premeditated <laughs> going into the sum summer. It's like for the first two games we're gonna try it. For the first, like, two weeks, we're going to try poke comps. And then, after we have enough experience trying poke comps, we're going to try, like, try this more split push-based strategy. And then we're going to try, like, assassin-based compositions. No, they probably just kind of, kind of went into games and they're like, So, what do you guys feel like playing today? Yeah, we haven't tried that in a while, let's wing it. Like, that's probably what they did, and it's still a better use of their, their regular season time than, like, playing the same thing over and over again. So we're not arguing that they, like, premeditated, super mastermind these, this experimentation. It was just honestly, like, it might as well have been goofing off, but I do think it made them better. So. Mm -hmm. All right, right. So I had to get, off that, get that off my chest, but I feel better now. So I'll yeah, stop so interrupting okay. people. Are no, that's fine. Stuff, but... That's fine. I expelled. I expelled the salt with the with the interesting block. Didn't do much, but still, I still felt a little salty afterwards. But you know, I just rested and all was fine. So Kelsey, on topic here, what team did you uh, get drawn with? Um, I drew Edward Gaming. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing their shirt, and I also mm. have um, blue bosoms. So I'm doing Clear Love Proud in my own way. <laughs> Uh, Edward Gaming, you probably know about, unless you haven't been paying any attention to International League of Legends at all, like, I don't know, maybe suddenly you grew interested in Worlds, but you had no interest in, M interest in MSI. So, starting from last year, they obviously had a really terrible Worlds showing, um, if you watched Worlds with their two Chinese players, Yu, who Mike just talked about, and Name. Um, mm -hmm. Name did not have a good showing. There's a debate as to whether he was sick or just bad. I don't know. We're not going to cover that here. A they got Deft and Pawn, who said they joined the team because they thought Clear Love was really good and they knew him from solo queue. And so they, as long as you're paying them a lot of money, they might as well join a team with Clear Love. A LGD, I think, directly after the spring playoffs when they met in the semifinals. Uh, it wasn't even close. It was just like a. I mean, the games are like somewhat close. Like, 
uh, even though there was like a 3-0 scoreline, but overall they they did lose every single game and LGD made it look pretty convincing by the end. So they learned that if they're going to be playing these top teams that they're not going to be able to get away with what they're doing the regular season. So um, <laughs> going to use that lovely word experimentation. <laughs> so what Snake did Don't is say the E word. In the summer, in the summer split, the e word, please. No, stop. <laughs> stop. stop. No, more. In the summer, no. no one ever experiments ever, Mike, okay? Everyone is 100% serious all the time, every single game. Okay, let's keep going. Alright, so anyway, this is this actually happened. They did experiment. Was this a good idea or, or not? I don't know. I don't how care. Do, how do you know they experiment? Like, do you listen to yourself, Dre Drexin? <laughs> Are you bad. listening to yourself? Um, They're just bad teams. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, yeah, so, lots of good things happen. No, but seriously, how do you know they experimented? Okay, so, because- So, if we're gonna do thing. this, we might as well, like, Yeah, yeah, no, 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 uh, serious, no, on a serious note, Snake, Snake did try to divert their style, and it looked really, really bad for a while, actually. They tried to implement split pushing, and, like, different, like, covert missions with objectives and stuff like that and it was it was just not going for them but in a way it was good because it expanded their repertoire and even though they weren't good at those styles and they still kind of revolve around finding a strong team fight or a 5 5v5 specifically not so much skirmishes it gave them more experience playing against those kind of things i feel and i think that after they decided to do these kind of strategies that they were stronger against teams that were diversifying their own strategies as well uh on top of that they kind of put the hot seat under a lot of their members by bringing in uh substitutes and stuff like that like uh martin or martin for uh crystal who ended up doing really well in his showing i believe and at the time of the meta was actually really nice because even though crystal had been starting to uh, diversify his role a little bit because he played a lot of silver i think it was his most played champion and he actually did pretty well on it like martin kind of gave that flexibility as a safe player rather than a player that needs to uh carry the game and all uh and probably the biggest one is their new mid laner u which is actually really cool because you can kind of like in a stretch kind of 